You're on. We'll call this special meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. Uh, Council, you have before you tonight a copy of the agenda for the night's meeting, and this will be uh, uh, this meeting is for a public hearing on the Lejeune Greenway and Trail Route. And at this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, I want to welcome everyone who has come out for tonight's meeting. Uh, it's a... Uh, I'm glad the weather's kind of held up a little bit for us so we could get out of here get out here without any umbrellas and that sort of thing i know that we have a, a topic tonight that there that a, a lot of you are interested in and in also in providing uh, input and comment on i want to assure you that we as a council are very interested to hear what you have to say on this matter uh, and i'm sure that the public will also uh, we'll, we'll have an interesting hearing in what you have to say. Uh, as I told some of you, this meeting is being televised on G G10 television. It's being covered by local news media and regional news media. So uh, I want to just assure you that the transparency is here. There's, uh, this is a public meeting. Uh, and with that said, uh, I, know, I did not uh, see Congressman Jones come in tonight. Uh, I think, was he anticipated? My apology. He was extended an invitation. We did not get a response. Okay. Um, well, anyway, uh, we're going to have this public hearing tonight, and uh, uh, it's a public hearing that really has not been uh, as follows. It hasn't really followed statutory or, or grant requirements, but uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. But I guess beforehand, I probably need to... Uh, have us all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks each and every day for all the blessings, all the benefits that you bestow upon each of us individually and upon us as the city of Jacksonville. We give you thanks for representative government. We give you thanks that we can gather in this hall tonight where a public hearing will occur and there will be different and divergent views on a topic. We give you thanks for all these liberties that we enjoy. But of all things, we give you thanks that each of us is an American and that we can have these liberties given to us and express divergent views each and every day to our elected representatives. As because of the service of our service members who've gone on before and those who are serving tonight, some in harm's way, that we continue to have these liberties that we so gratefully appreciate. And as always, we ask your guidance and your direction to be with our mayor and to be with our council as they hear and deliberate this evening. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. All right, please be seated. <clears throat> And like I said, uh, this is pro a public hearing for this, this matter and this matter alone. Um, and we do have a desire tonight uh, to, as a result of this uh, hearing, to uh, be provided with factual information. Um, and after the issues ra or ra have been raised, the council or I may call on staff or others uh, that may be able to give better guidance uh, to handle a particular question or or provide additional information. Now, we uh, welcome your comments, but please limit them 
to the subject at hand, and that's the trail, the uh, Lejeune Greenway and Trail. Um, also, I'd like to say that this is not going to be a debate, so it's not going to be a back and forth exchange uh, to the uh, between us and you. Um, we're we're going to listen to what you have to say. If there's some information that we can provide back to you in in the way of feedback, we'll do it through our staff personnel. But to to debate this issue, uh, that's not the purpose of this meeting. Uh, your comments should be addressed to us, to the council, and pertain directly to the issue. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call upon the speakers in the order that you signed up on the sign-up sheet that was placed outside earlier. And uh, I may recognize others to speak after the list has been exhausted. I know some of you probably came in after the list was taken up, and I do not want to, uh, you know, not allow you to have the opportunity to speak. Uh, one other thing is we uh, normally under council rules, we have allotted time uh, per speaker of three minutes. However, for the purpose of tonight's hearing, uh, the council will allow an additional minute or two for you to complete your point. In other words, when you get to the three minutes, I'm not going to go unplug your microphone, okay? Uh, I don't think that would be fair. So uh, I'd like for you to be able to get your point across. And, and uh, uh, again, like I say, I, I'm interested at, to hear what you have to say. Uh, maximum time per speaker shouldn't be more than five minutes. Uh, hopefully you can uh, make your point in five minutes. Uh, when you're called, please come to the podium. We have the podiums up here. Do you have a preference of either one or? All right, the preference is this one over here on the, to my right or to your left. Um, and if you will, please, when you come up to the podium, please clearly state your name and address so the clerk can record it in the record. Uh, and if you are affiliated with or representing a particular group, if you would mind telling us what group that is so that we could also put that in the record, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we request that groups or organizations designate a spokesperson to address the group's concerns, if it's a group uh, that's being represented. Each speaker will be allowed only one opportunity to speak, so please get your thoughts organized. You know, know what you're going to say when you come up there. Uh, and. Uh, if you need to be, if you want me to push you back further back in the pack or something like that, if I come to your name and you're not ready to present or something, just let me know and I'll move you down the list a little bit. Okay? That's not on my cheat sheet, but I'm going to tell you that anyway. Because I don't want to begrudge anybody the opportunity to be heard. Uh, in the interest of time, we ask that if another speaker has actually raised a point or addressed your concern that you know, just in the interest of time that we, you know, that you not repeat it. You know, if, if it gets said and it's said effectively, you know, uh, that will stand as far as the record is concerned. This hearing, again, like I said, is being recorded. It's being, it's going to be televised. And again, like I said, you have local and regional media coverage. Uh, since it is being recorded, you do need to, when you come up to the podium, Make sure you speak into the microphone. You don't have to get right into it like that, but you know, you know, just a normal distance would be fine. You don't, you don't, don't walk away from the podium because if you if you do, we just can't hear you and it won't be recorded. So try to stay with the microphone at the podium. Uh, if you have a demonstration, I don't know if anybody does or something. And you wanted to point to something on the screen. Uh, is there something there for them to use for that purpose? pad on that podium. Okay. Stylus. You have a stylus. Okay. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, right? Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, and last but not least, at the end of the hearing, uh, the council will determine if they desire to provide further direction uh, to the staff or to take any action they deem appropriate. And at this time, I would like to turn uh, this over to Dr. Richard Woodruff, our city manager, for some comments. Dr. Woodruff. Evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Certainly a pleasure to be with you and to hold the public hearing this evening that was requested by Congressman Jones. What we would like to do is thank the public for coming out. We understand that there are people who support the route. 
There are people who are opposed to it. There are people who are simply here for information. We hope in the first part of this testimony that we provide you with accurate information. One of the things that my office has found over the last two weeks is that people have assumed certain things about the route, and when we find or provide additional information to them, they will say, well, gee, I just didn't realize that that's what was actually going to happen. I thought it was going to be something else. So what we'd like to do in this opening part is really talk about the Lejeune Greenway and Trail, give you a little bit of background. The graphics that you see on both screens and the graphic that's here on the stylist really shows the, the uh, grove, the memorial gardens as they are established. At the top, you have Highway 24 Lejeune Boulevard. On the left-hand side, you have the Monford Point Road. At the right-hand bottom, you have a dotted line. That's because that is the right-of-way of the bypass. What you will see in this graphic is that the Beirut Memorial is in the upper left-hand corner. Kevin, if you would mark that for me, please. You will also notice that towards the middle is the Vietnam Memorial. Back to the left, under the Beirut Memorial, is the 9-11 Memorial. Now, these are the three memorials that exist today. There are two memorials that are currently planned. The one in the upper center is the Monfort Point Marine. The one in the lower center is the Museum of the Marine. Those two have not yet been established. They have plans. They have very good concepts. They're in the process of raising money. You can also see by the green line the actual route that has been approved by many agencies, which we'll show you in a few minutes, relative to the overall trail itself. The concept that this trail goes through any of the memorials is not an accurate concept, and we'd like to show that to you. This is the Beirut Memorial. You can see also the 9-11 Memorial below it. There is a legal description that is provided for the Beirut Memorial. In a few minutes, Mike Elsey, former city engineer, is going to show you that legal boundary. This path does not go through that legal boundary, except possibly on the far right-hand side where it crosses some of the wetland areas. What I'd like to do now, because we all have been out there, I would like to ask you to take a trip with me through a technology that's called Photosphere. What that is, is basically a 360-degree a photography, both horizontal and vertical, so that we can at least begin the discussion on a factual basis as where the path will pass through the gardens. Currently, many people think that it's going actually through the Beirut Memorial. It is not. We are currently standing under the power lines that are in the gardens. You will notice that we are about 40 feet away from the landscaping, which technically begins the area for the Beirut Memorial. We're over 100 feet away from the monument itself. Let me ask you, and hold on to your seats, I'll try not to spin us too quickly. Let's spin now to the right. And what you'll notice in this spin is a large grassed area. What you'll also notice is let's look up. Technology is an amazing thing. They even taught me today, Mayor, how to do this. So this is pretty amazing. <laughs> what you'll find is this is a power line. What you'll also find, if you will look directly to the right of the power line, that is the path that we're proposing. You can see it does not go through the Beirut Memorial. Now, is that the Vietnam Memorial? See, sticking out of the pine tree right Yes, sir, it is. Is that what that is? What you'll see is that is the wall, which okay. is part of that. Okay. So let's spin a little bit further around. You can see now, generally in the center of the picture, the wall which has the medallions of the five military. And that, of course, leads to the Vietnam Memorial. You will also see, now in the center of the picture, the 9-11. And then, as we spin further around, you can see the parking lot. And no, my F-150 is not parked there, Mr. Bittner. But you will see the walkway made out of brick. As we spin further around, you will once again pick up the power lines and the route. Let me spend a little further 
and let's get all the way back to this point. Before anything existed in the Memorial Gardens, the power lines existed. Before the Beirut Memorial was established, before the Vietnam Memorial was established, before the 9-11 was established, before Monford Point Road became four-laned, before the bypass was built, this power line existed. You're going to see pictures in a few minutes of citizens who volunteered to go in and clean out the forest because this was the forest. What we tried to do, and when I say we, I was not part of that committee. I'm too young to have been here that long, Mayor, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But you, what you'll find is that when the committee began to study where the Beirut Memorial should go, one of the things they wanted was a route that was simple. It was simple in topography. It was simple in permitting. It was simple in construction. And more importantly, it would not do harm to any of the current or future memorials. So what we have is a path that is under the power lines. It is not a path that goes through the memorial at all. It is over 100 feet away. And again, as you look, here is that path. Now it is certainly true when we have the annual observance that this path is used as part of the observation and, and commemoration activities. We put bleachers in this area. We have speaker stands that occur in the garden itself, in the Beirut Memorial. The citizens will gather in this lawn. Nothing that the trail proposes will interfere with that continued multiple use of this area. But again, this is where? It's under the power lines. And because it's under the power lines, no one can build anything vertical. We can only build flat services. That's why the bike path can go through there and be part of the approved easement. Kevin, please. Now, again, you can see the trail itself, and you have seen with aerial photography where it tra traverses the overall garden area. This is a photograph taken from under the power lines looking back at the memorial. I want to show you, there were two citizens there one day when we were out taking pictures. Those are normal size adults. Those of us who have visited know that the plaza in front of the wall is not a flat plaza, meaning that it has steps that go down to it. From this part, you're over 100 feet to where those citizens are. Yes, there are truck noises on 24. Yes, there are truck noises and motorcycle noises that occur out on the Monford Point Road. But the noises that can occur in this area will be over 100 feet. The other thing that we want to stress is that under state law, mopeds and, and motorcycles are not allowed on bicycle paths. This is a multi-purpose trail. What you will have is people on bicycles, on foot, whether they're running, whether they're walking, whether they're pushing strollers. Yes, they could carry music with them if they wanted to. However, the last time I checked, Target no longer sells those big boom boxes that we used to have when we were 16. On the other hand, this is an area that we need to ensure has dignity. It's an area that represents a sacrifice that many people have given whether their names are on the Beirut wall, whether their names are on the Vietnam wall, whether their names are represented by the beam, whether their names are going to be represented by the, the Monford Point facility or by the Museum of the Marines. It is an area that we must ensure has dignity. One of the things in permitting, you must show what we believe is a path that can in fact be permitted. Now, as you move from under the power lines, many of you have noticed that to get back to the highway, you must go down and you must cross a floodplain area. There is an existing bridge that is there. Why is that important? Anytime you're dealing with any structures or development in a floodplain, you must meet certain criteria. One of the criteria has to do with impediments that are placed, structures that are placed within the floodplain. 
This structure was placed there many years ago. And because of that, it establishes a permitting opportunity that would not otherwise exist. And that is the fact that there's already a crossing. This is the same whether you're developing a subdivision like Williamsburg or Carolina Forest, where we've had to look at how you get through wetland areas where you have a path that has already been established, that gives you a permitting advantage. What's the history? Master plan adopted in 1982. That's when nationwide we began to remove the railroad tracks and replace them with the Rails to Trails program. The base at the time that this community began that discussion specifically asked us to try to find connectivity between residential neighborhoods and the base. Why is that? Well, many of the people who work on the base, many of our troops, they live out in the community. It also gives them ability, especially in non-war time, to have easy movement for recreational purposes. The first trail was built when the tracks were removed, and all of you lived through, although I was not here, the creation of the bridge over Highway 24. It is heavily used. The project was technically funded in 07. The city funded the design in 09. We hired an architect. We established stakeholder groups. They included, they included the Lejeune Memorial Gardens Advisory Committee. That committee was actually expanded to make sure that representatives of the various memorials were also included. And of course, the base was one of the key stakeholders. Many routes were considered. Now, as the committee began their work, one of the things that they wanted to do was to look at the area to determine where the route should go. And they had some criteria that they wanted to use. And you're gonna hear more about those criteria, but, just, but basically they were these things. Number one, it had to be something that could be built and permitted. Number two, it should use a route that already existed if at all possible. Number three, it should not block the view of the Beirut Memorial from any position, whether it's from 24 or from some other area. Number five, it should allow passage from the cemetery over to the gardens. One thing, let's get straight. This does not go through the cemetery. The reason why the connectivity to the cemetery was important was that when we have these major events, we are blessed that even after 30 years, we will have a thousand people turn out for the Beirut Memorial. We will have four or 500 people turn out for the 9-11 ceremony. We need parking. The cemetery has always opened its gates so that parking could be available. And we need a safe passage across Monford Point Road. Once again, if you look at the route, you can see that the route goes between the memorials as they exist today they make sure that the Monfort Point facility can be built. You will also notice that as it crosses the road, it does not go into the cemetery. It then parallels the Monfort Point Road and gets back out to 24. It uses the power line easement. We believe that it holds sacred the integrity, the integrity of the memorials. And again, no memorial is crossed. What are some key constraints? Well, this is not Florida where I grew up, where everything was elevation nine feet. Amazingly enough, this site has a lot of topography. In the area where the memorials and where the trail is proposed to be built, there is a variation from 19 feet all the way down to nine feet. In building this, we have requirements that must be met relative to slope and constructability. Here are photographs that will give you an idea of the contours. I know most people in this room have visited the memorial area. You may not have actually looked behind the, the Beirut Memorial. These are pictures that show you the topographic release, relief in that area. This is the current path that's directly behind the wall, the path there by being between the memorial and 24. And this is a view from 24 which of course meets one of the requirements that the committee wanted. They wanted to make sure that nothing is built in this area that will interfere with the view from Highway 24. Why is that? While many people visit the memorials, most people drive by it. We have about 14,000 trips a day that pass by this road. 
in your lifetime prior to my being here, this was a much, heavier, a much more heavily traveled road system, but it still carries over 14,000 vehicles per day. We want to make sure that those vehicles can see the memorial. The other thing that we mentioned earlier was the passage from the cemetery. You can see where the power lines are in the opening. This will ensure that we have that connectivity. And then we have things such as flooding. Because this is not a flat piece of property, we have a floodplain that we must deal with. You will notice in the hatched area, the, the areas that come under the flood zone. And yes, our path passes through it. But using the simplistic approach, which is the best approach on designing these, we looked for current things that we could use that were already in the floodplain. And therefore, we used the power line to get us to the floodplain to cross the existing bridge and then use the floodplain where we can exit, as you can see, close to 24. Let's talk about a couple of areas again. You can see the route. You can see the red line, which generally shows you the limit of the, of the landscaping. And this, of course, is where the power line itself is. In early June, we were pleased to meet with some citizens who asked us to study a separate route. And that route is shown in red. And as best we can depict, this is the route that was requested for us to study. You will notice how close it is to the memorial itself. You can look, the gentleman in the middle is standing there, and that is where we're going to take the trail if it were to go through that alternative path. It would actually go in this area, and then it would go right through the back area behind the memorial. That sidewalk is currently five feet wide. This would have to be 14 feet. It would also require the construction of a bridge, and one of the problems with that is it would violate one of the basic criteria that the original committee used, and that was not to create anything that would interfere with the appearance of the memorial. There was another proposal that was brought in by a professional. It was a good proposal, had some merits, but it too had some issues. One was, how do you get through the floodplain? While some people believe that you could make this work simply using the current topography, the consultants from the NCDOT have assured us that that cannot be permitted. They have said that if we use that alternative route, we're going to have to build a bridge. Now, there are several types of bridges you could build. One bridge is a bridge that has underneath supports, vertical supports. The problem with that is you're going to have to do additional studies to prove the amount of interference that those structures would have with flooding. Another would be to build what is uh, referred to as a steadfast, thank you, that's a, even with all my background in engineering days, I never heard that term, a steadfast bridge. That's a bridge that basically supports itself with two points of contact. Again, not something that meets the criteria of keeping open the view. Regardless, we are admitting that there are other routes. But what we're testifying to you on is the route that was selected is a route that is the simplest route to build and to permit. It's also the less expensive route in order to fund. If you were to do other things, you're going to have to do other studies. Detailed studies could also adversely affect other plans. Now, what does that mean? Right now, the detailed studies are very limited because they do not cover the floodplain throughout the whole memorial area. As you get into those studies, it could cause problems for other proposed memorials. The current plan has been approved. And again, this is the route that we are proposing. At this time, I'd like to ask Michael Elsey, who was the city engineer and project manager at, this, at the time this was built, to come forward and talk to you not only as a former city engineer, but also to talk to you as a member of the advisory group that worked through all of the initial plans. Mr. Elsey. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of the council, I've observed that there's been a tremendous amount of misinformation that's being passed around about the routing of the bicycle and, and pedestrian trail at Lejeune Memorial Gardens, specifically near the Beirut Memorial. My interest comes from the fact that I have been involved with the Beirut Memorial since its inception on October 23, 1983. 
At the time, I was public works director for the city of Jacksonville. It was the liaison with the city's beautification and appearance commission. After the commission spent three years raising private funds, I was privileged to be, to be the project manager and construction manager for the project. Now, the base had loaned us a little over two acres in the corner there of a Montford Landing Road and Lejeune Boulevard, and we selected the portion of the site. Initially, we, we were looking at the site right there up in the corner, just above where the parking lot was, but because the other area was pretty wooded, and then we discovered that little knoll out there that we ultimately decided on that was a very visual and a very attractive site. So that was a site that we decided to build a memorial on because of its a visual effect. The city held a dedication, opening the Beirut Memorial to the world on October 23rd, 1986, demonstrating the respect that a civilian community should have for its military neighbors. Since that dedication, the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee has been a strong protector of what happens at the site. Being a Marine Vietnam veteran and having been stationed in Washington, D.C., I understand the aura that comes with memorials. Families such as the Youngs, Mufflers, Joukowskis, and Marines such as Colonel Tim Garrity, Major Bob Jordan, Chief Warrant Officer Randy Gaddis, who after 30 years are all like family to me, know that I, how much this memorial, how important this memorial is to me, and how much it means to me personally. I mention these families specifically because Judy Young and Joan Muffler started the family support group known as the Beirut Connection immediately following the, the bombing and kept these families together for years until they joined with the Beirut Veterans of America to represent and speak for them. They know that our committee would never allow anything to happen or be built that would diminish the memorial and its significance. I have been appointed a member of the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee since its exception and every year work on our annual observance. Next Thursday will be our 28th observance, 31 years after the bombing. Now, there have been a few instances where the memorial needed some protection. A few years ago, the Vietnam Memorial designers presented a concept that placed the Vietnam Memorial almost on top of the Beirut Memorial, both with vertical construction being a large uh, welcome center building and also their wall pointed right at the Beirut Memorial. And the walkway was going to basically encompass all of the uh, power line right of way. And basically, it would make the Beirut Memorial seem very insignificant. And so as a result of that and us raising the issue, the, was the creation of the Lejeune Memorial Garden Steering Committee by the base to advise the, the base officials on the placement of any additions in the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. Following my retirement, representing the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee, I participated in meetings at City Hall and on site to look for possible alignments for the bicycle pedestrian trail that had been planned for a number of years. This was not done flippantly. A North Carolina Department of Transportation would not allow a trail along the highway for obvious safety reasons. So we investigated the site behind the wall looking for alternatives between the memorial and Lejeune Boulevard and noted particularly the elevation of the hill to the west, to the, which would be to the left side of, the, of this drawing. The Americans with Disability Act, ADA, requires that trails must be accessible to the handicapped and that slopes must not exceed one inch vertically for every 12 inches horizontally. Now, in order to meet this criteria, a fill area would, or a bridge would have been required. Now, this area also happens to be a floodplain for Burnt House Branch, so filling was out of the question. Since I retired from the city, I'm not as interested in floodplains as I once was, but I am interested in aesthetics. To match the highest elevation in the west, the bridge would have to be pretty high. From Lejeune Boulevard, as you saw the drawing or the picture earlier, you can see the Beirut Memorial for the tree, through the trees, and it's quite a beautiful view. A bridge placed across that valley would simply be a shocking sight. I don't think any of us would want that particular thing to happen. For that reason, we finally began looking at putting the trail in front of the memorial along the back of the power company right-of-way. <laughs> which would take it at least 90 feet away from the plaza and about 120 feet from the wall. As horizontal construction, it would be unobtrusive there and yet serve the purpose, providing another, another means of coming to Lejeune Memorial Gardens. There have been other su ideas suggested, such as putting the pathway directly behind the memorial, one being as close as 10 feet behind the wall, and another actually incorporating the existing sidewalk behind the wall, which you saw a little bit earlier. 
Again, you cannot fill because it is still floodplain back there, and a bridge at that location would be too close to allow private reflection in the plaza, plaza area. Comments have been made about the number of bicyclists using the trail disturbing the, the memorial areas, and they, all the citations have been regarding the Washington, D.C. area and po also the possibility of vandalism. This is not going to be a freeway. As previously mentioned, it's going to be bicycles and pedestrians and young mothers with, with their uh, strollers. The only known vandalism in the Laguara Gardens to date has been marine colors taken from the Vietnam Memorial. Now, who wouldn't want a flag from such a memorial? And that's probably why it was taken. We prevented that possibility at the Beirut Memorial by installing locks on the halyards. We've never had a problem there. And you can get a flag having flown over the memorial simply by making the request to the base. Bicycling is simply another mode of transportation and provides individuals and families with opportunities that they might not otherwise have. We should want people to come and visit the memorials by whatever means they can. They are not private memorials, are, but are for everyone. The Beirut Memorial Advisory Board and I believe the trail should be placed as recommended by the planners and engineers. Thank you. Let me close by showing just a few other things on where we actually are on the project. 2009, we had stakeholders with ideas. The Marine Corps encouraged the plan. We had subsequent review and endorsements. We have approvals from the Beirut Memorial Advisory Board, Monford Point Marine Association, Lejeune Memorial Gardens Advisory Committee, although it wasn't unanimous, it was almost, the Museum of the Marines. Beirut Veterans of America, U.S. Navy has granted the easement. The Marine Corps has approved. The Commandant desires the Greenway to be built. NCDOT has signed off, and as of yesterday, we received a letter from the Federal Highway Department saying that the project as proposed was in compliance with their standards. In previous discussions, the Mayor and Council have approved the route. That doesn't mean that you have to stay with that approval. You have flexibility. You are the elected officials. All regulatory approvals are in hand, the current design is fully funded, and the project is ready to bid and be built. Why are we here tonight? We're here tonight because, once again, if we're going to move forward, we want to make sure that factual information is there. We want to make absolutely certain that we have honored the request, which you, Mayor, and the Council are doing this evening, of honoring Representative Jones's request for a public hearing. We still want public input. What is the city's pledge? The handsome gentleman on the right is Mayor Sammy Phillips. His wife asked me to say that, by the way. Okay. As Mike Elsey said, it has now been 31 years since that day that terrorism started in this world. We all wish we could roll back that clock. There are names on that wall that many of you knew. I did not live here. We have heard the stories of them being our neighbors, our Sunday school teachers, our fellow members in clubs, our coaches. There are people sitting in the audience tonight. They were family members. They were fathers. They were brothers. We do not in any way take this as something that's not important. We believe that this is important. I hate to say it, most of the world has forgotten October 23rd, 1983. The people in this room, whether they are for or against the trail, have not forgotten. They will never forget. The pledge that the city has made and now contributed 25 ceremonies towards is we will not forget. Regardless of the outcome of where the trail is built, it is not going to change this city's commitment that we are going to honor those that gave the ultimate that morning, October 23rd, 1983. To further our pledge for all of the Marines and sailors and all of those who fight to defend this country, the Vietnam Memorial was built. The single largest financial contributor to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was the city of Jacksonville. 
Over $1 million of city tax money went to build this. And yes, the county commission likewise contributed. And most recently, in order to complete the dome, the city's tourism development authority, which we fondly refer to as the TDA, contributed another $50,000 to finish the dome. What's ahead? The Monford Point Memorial is essential for the history of this community and the history of this country. Using the city's TDA, we have already pledged $150,000 to help them begin the process of constructing phase one. And the Museum of the Marine. Once again, this city has stood tall. One million dollar donation from the city and over 200,000 from the TDA to help promote donation giving. Our one million is for brick and mortar. Today we stand on a very close groundbreaking where the reflection pond, the Eagle Globe and Anchor, and the gardens will begin for the Museum of the Marine. I will say to you and I will say to the public, under my watch as your city manager, there will not be any degradation to the integrity and honor for any of the memorials. The city is already standing by and working to improve the maintenance as the military budget is cut. Our folks are out there on a regular basis doing things such as taking down dead trees, trimming hedges. Fortunately, the Marine Corps still has sufficient money for mowing. That brings us to one other thing. I have to tell you, in full disclosure, I'm not so sure I'm a cyclist anymore, Mayor, but I do ride a bicycle. Now, there's a difference. If you look at the memorials in Washington, at the Washington Mall, and you ask the question, what's the relationship with bicycle? I'm going to show you pictures, and I'll let you draw your own conclusion. We honor those who have turned out tonight to express their opinion, whether it's for or against. That's one of the greatest things, as John said in his prayer, as Americans, we have the right to come together and discuss. I appreciate the audience and I appreciate you, the elected officials, for allowing me to share this information. We pledge to you, though, we will never forget and we will never in any way desecrate the integrity of these memorials. Thank you. All right. I have uh, several people that have signed up to speak tonight, and I think that we'll go ahead at this point, and we'll uh, start asking people to come to the podium. And like I said, I'll, I'll go in order of the list, how people signed up. And uh, again, like I said, if somebody's not ready or prepared to do it and want to uh, pause or wait till another chance, uh, that's fine. If you came in after your sheet was taken up and you want to speak, uh, we'll get to you after everybody else has, has spoken also. So with that, the first person I have is Mr. John Sennett. Uh, John. Hello. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, first off, I want to thank the city for the tremendous job that y'all have done in honoring our veterans and in working with all parties uh, to achieve what is going to ultimately be one of the largest memorial gardens in the United States, Lejeune Memorial Gardens. For those of you who don't know me, I've had a hand in bits and pieces of it for over 30 years. Uh, the designers that worked on the competition from NC State were one of them was an employee and they drew the drawings up on the Baruch Memorial 
in my office. In terms of the Vietnam Memorial, a little more than 12 years ago, Larry Fitzpatrick approached me and asked me if I could help to design that, and I did, and we have done so pro bono. 100% of our work was done at no cost to the Memorial Foundation. It was a gift back to the city of Jacksonville and the people of Onslow County because they had been good to my firm and we have enjoyed working here. In terms of Montfort Point, we are current architects of that project and hope to have it ready to go in a few weeks. We also did the master plan for Lejeune Memorial Gardens, the one that was presented up here because early on we began to recognize that with the Museum of the Marine going there, this was going to become very, very precious territory. It was going to require that careful and deliberate thought such as what Mr. Woodruff has presented tonight goes into every decision involving what is to go into the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. Now, uh, I was asked and given a call to look at some, uh, a report that was developed by the city. I reviewed the report and referred it back to the folks with the Vietnam Memorial Foundation. And there were some issues in there that uh, caused me to have some serious concerns. And I did call the city and speak with the city representatives of the staff about it. Um, in terms of possible alternatives or possible solutions, initially we looked at three that cut down and crossed uh, the wetlands. Uh, there are areas down at that creek that are defined as wetlands and towards Highway 24 those wetlands get to be roughly four or five feet across. I literally went down there today and stepped across the wetlands with one step. I didn't have to jump, just had to stretch my leg a little bit and step across it. Um, the question that was raised was whether we should come between the 911 memorial and the Brute Memorial. And early on, the folks on the committee, and I also asked that we set up a committee on base as a guiding foundation, if you will, as to what would be good enough to go into the June Memorial Gardens, where it would go, and to manage it. And we have even set up uh, a procedure where every single improvement in that garden is controlled by Parker Associates from the standpoint that as-built drawings are given to them, and each individual project has the cumulative effect of providing a full documentation of the entire garden. So in looking at whether we come through that area or not, the Veterans, Vietnam Veterans Foundation was extremely concerned about it. I looked at it, I said, well, you're either gonna have to accept it or you're gonna have to find some alternatives. And I drew three alternatives that do go through the low line area. Uh, one of them, two of them encroached very closely on the backside of the Brute Memorial. But in going through and looking at some other alternatives and talking with FEMA and getting guidance from FEMA, uh, what we saw was that we could come through, and if you can put up your map, I'll be glad to sort of point out uh, an option or two. Glenn, can you or Kevin put up um, one of the slides that shows the site plan, please? Okay. Is that the one you'd like? This is the one. Okay. I remember you're, they can't hear you, so. You I'll talk loud. Well, actually, the style is, it should be right up there on the wall. Because it got a. should have a lamp. magic pen. Okay. See we'll see how this works. Right along in here, there is a uh, series of guy wires that support a large telephone pole. So this, this curve is due to clearing those guy wires. 
But once you get down into this location here, there is the possibility of coming up and crossing over the top of the culvert, going around and coming back down and discharging and staying completely out of it, out of the uh, Beirut Memorial area. The location here, there is a high point in here where you can cut through and across and you can make your grades up through here at roughly four and a half percent. The issue that was presented earlier by Mike was one foot and 12, which is a little over eight percent. So you could actually have a fully fledged handicapped sidewalk out there uh, without railings. And um, the only question now is, well, will that view uh, take away from what you see right here, the back side of the memorial? And the sidewalk would be flush in the ground and you would see across it, you would not even see the sidewalk. Um, we did have discussions with FEMA to see if there was the ability to come through and cross with a grate. Uh, we got letters from FEMA saying that they could declare this as a minor project and use a common sense approach to uh, go across there that if you could visually tell that you were not impacting the flood water, <coughs> that you could cross it. Uh, now, I know that we have representatives here uh, who are consultants to DOT that have a differing opinion, but uh, I can only tell you what FEMA told me. But if you cross over that culvert, then you don't cross the floodway, you don't cross the flood plain, and you do not have a bridge and you do not have a visual impediment to, uh, Vietnam, to the Beirut Memorial from Highway 24. So based on that information, uh, I've done what I was asked to do, and that is to look at alternative approaches and see if there was one that might be viable. So you have a choice tonight. You can go with the very fine solution that has been presented by Mr. Rudruff. You can uh, look to see if this other solution is viable. But I do want to tell you how very much we appreciate you holding this public hearing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Senate. Next, I have Mr. Joe Frowitter. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, uh, Council. Uh, my name is Joseph Frowitter, F-R-O-H-W-I-T-T-E-R. I'm a resident of uh, Newport, North Carolina. I'm a retired Navy warrant officer, 16 months in Vietnam, 23 years in the Navy. Uh, I am here to shed with you, share with you uh, the fact uh, that I have already shared with uh, Congressman Jones. And uh, there are, I see that the, uh, the path is really not a, an immediate threat to the Vietnam Memorial. However, uh, I want everybody to know that there are ashes of a fallen Vietnam veteran spread there. Not necessarily legal. Uh, but it was done about three years ago, and when I uh, told uh, Congressman Jones, he uh, seemed very excited about it, very interested in it, to the point we've had uh, telephone conversations about it. And I was hoping to be here to see him tonight. But anyways, I just wanted to let you know that uh, the ashes, there are ashes spread within the uh, Vietnam Memorial. Apparently that has some kind of significance of sacred ground. That's all I have to add to it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Amy Battle Kresge. Did I say that right, ma'am? Yes, sir. Kresge. Okay. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Amy Battle Kresge. I'm here tonight because part of my heart is on that wall. My dad, for Sergeant David Battle, was killed in the bombing 31 years ago next Thursday, and I was 11 years old. I'm here on behalf of many family members and survivors of the bombing ask that you change the location of the proposed path. With me right now, I have signatures of 231 
people who've signed an online petition, and you're welcome to see those. Um, many of which left comments about how wrong it is for the bike trail to go through any part of the memorial site. I also have 160 signatures from active duty Marines from Camp Lejeune who want you to stop the bike path as it's currently proposed. These signatures have all been collected in under seven days. Seven days and over 300 people, family members, survivors, veterans, citizens of Onslow County that are asking that you listen to what they have to say. I understand that time and money have been spent on this project already. However, I need to point out to everyone that the families and many of the survivors have been totally left out of this for five years. I live and have lived in Onslow County since I was six years old. No one has attempted to contact me or to my knowledge any of the family members at the beginning or during the process that's been going on since 2009. I only just found out about this proposed path a month ago. How can those of us who lost a loved one or those who walk around every single day with physical and emotional scars from being in and surviving the blast be left out of this conversation? The sanctity and reverence that was intended when this memorial was erected and when those names were etched into granite should have been the very first thought and process. Those of us who lost a father, a husband, a grandfather, a brother, a son, we should have been contacted. Nothing will ever fill the hole that's been created for all of us that lost someone we loved or for the Marines and sailors who lost comrades that day. But having a sacred and an honored site where we can go to commemorate and celebrate the amazing men who gave their lives that morning helps. No one should be allowed to ride a bike through a such a reverent place. And I know we've seen pictures that happens in other parts of this country that doesn't make it right. No one would, should be allowed to ride through Arlington or at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier or at the Vietnam Wall. There may not be anyone buried at our site, but it is where we go to feel closer to those we lost, to teach our children and our grandchildren. And I take my daughter there and she sits here tonight. And that's one of the places I take her to show her who her grandfather was. And that's where I've met survivors who've told her stories about who her grandfather was. And that's the only way until we meet again in heaven that she's gonna know him. That's how we teach them about the ultimate sacrifice that someone who's loving them from heaven made to ensure that they live in a free country. I ask that you no longer leave us out of the decision. The memories of those we lost that morning or the feelings of those of us who miss them every day. Will the entrance to the bike trail be closed or guarded by a police officer or deputy every time there's a private or public ceremony at one of the three memorials? At least one Marine retirement ceremony has already been held at that wall. I was invited and I was very pleased to attend Emmanuel Simmons ceremony. He was very determined and deliberate about the location that his retirement ceremony would be held so that his brothers could be present. We ask that you choose the path that Mr. Senate, our architect, has proposed, one that does not impact our memorial or don't have a bike path at all. Thank you. Do you need a copy of the uh, petitions that she has? Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Kresge. Linda Gibson. Uh, okay, that'll be fine. Mr. Darrell Gibson. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, everybody else. Uh, I'm an old guy. I'm a Beirut vet. I keep a low profile. Uh, I always feel guilty because I came back when a lot of people didn't. Uh, I don't, uh, do not want the uh, trail to go any part through that uh, our memorial. That's a sacred area. Uh, if it can go around, then that's it with, uh, as it sounds like it can be done. Then that's part. Then uh, I'm all for that. But uh, to go through any part of that, uh, those. Uh, monuments is, is wrong. A bike trail is going to lead to dogs. It's going to lead to, and I don't nothing against dogs, but dogs trail along bicycles and they leave stuff for, on the path for people to walk on. And it sounds childish and all to even bring that up, but who's going to clean that up? 
So right now we got a clean place. Let's keep it clean. Uh, as uh, the battles have said, and I knew, sorry, Major Battle, uh, we owe that to those folks not to have that any pass through those sites. Uh, that, that, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Yes, sir. As a wife of a vet who was in Beirut at the time, who by a miracle was not killed, and having lived with him through all the horrors, the nightmares, the PTSD, the loss of his friends, the guilt, all of these things impact these men. This is the place where they can go lay that down, at least for a little while. Please do not run a bike trail through that garden. If begging will help, I would beg it. That's how important it is. These men deserve better than that. It's an area where it should be respectful, quiet, peaceful, <coughs> not a place where there's, as we said earlier, bicycles, dogs, kids in strollers, one or two at the time is a fine thing, but it's not a place for just public transportation. It's an area that means a great deal to a lot of people. I ask that you please take them into your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, this is Miss Linda Gibson at uh, 201 East Lake Ridge in Jacksonville. Uh, Cynthia Lake. Cynthia Lake, 102 West Pearl Street, Mineola, Florida. Here for a brother that's on the wall. Gunny Sergeant Donald Hildreth. I got his picture right here with his wife. She's never remarried. She can't come to the wall. She can't bring herself. She still can't talk about it to this day. She's never remarried. And here's his grandson. He's never seen, never will. Never seen his niece or nephew. Never will. And y'all, please, as she just said, we beg you, do not put a bike path through. It's not a traction area. It is our place to go and have peace. It is our place of comfort to go and be with our loved one. I know it might sound silly to y'all, but it ain't to us. We love them. Please, please. And if you believe in that, that you got up there on your sign, a caring community, you will go around and don't put it through. That's all I got to say. Because if you put it through, you need to take that caring community off your sign because it don't stand. Thank you, Ms. Light. Joseph Hull. Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, first of all, thanks for allowing uh, us to come to this uh, open forum. You know, I have been in this community for 40 years. I am a veteran of a couple of different shooting wars. I understand the, what's behind some of the emotion. I have emotion on that wall, the Beirut wall. I served with a number of those men that's on that wall, but I also served and, and had die in my arms of people on that Vietnam Wall. There is nothing, nothing that I can think of more than to let people ride their bike, walk by their memorials in our Lejeune Memorial Garden. By the way, I'm representing the Lejeune Memorial Gardens Committee right from day one. 
I've also, the Museum of the Marine, and somebody who's been here for 40 years. I respect every person on that wall, more so than anybody will ever know, because I have fought with some of them, and some of them have died because of that wall. So I appreciate a place to go in the evening to be able to sit down there either at the, the Beirut Wall or walk the trail behind the Vietnam Memorial over there and sit at quiet time and remember those who have died for our country. Thank you. Fernando Schiffelbein. My name is Fernando Schoffelbein, and I live at <clears throat> 701 Little John Avenue in, uh, here in Jacksonville. I would like to thank the mayor and the city uh, council for allowing me to uh, voice my opinion tonight. As a member of the Beirut uh, Memorial Advisory Board, I would like to speak out about the importance of the trail designed through the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. There are more than 17 miles of trails in the city of Jacksonville. The portion of this trail that I'm talking about is less than even an eighth of a mile, linking the trail from downtown Jacksonville to the base. Many residents and visitors walk throughout the Lejeune Memorial Gardens daily. Some jog, some bike on existing sidewalks and part of their routine. The trail would define the path for these citizens without disturbing those who are reflecting in various memorials. Our military legacy guides our troops today. By encouraging people to enter the Lejeune Memorial Gardens, we are ensuring that this legacy continues. There are valuable lessons from the Vietnam War, the tragedy of the peacekeeping mission in Beirut of October 23, 1983, the horrific terrorist bombing on American soil on September 11, 2001, which needs to be remembered. At the same time, these are healing memorials. They are consistent reminders of the courageous men and women who gave their lives for our freedoms. Promotions, retirements, flag raisings, wreath laying, and funerals happen regularly at these gardens. Testimonies to how these memorials are a part of our lives in the people of this community and throughout the nation. Public, uh, public school field trips and military PMEs are also conducted at these memorials. Thus, the trail is not simply a path of concrete, it is a trail that represents the lessons, remembrance of freedoms and patronism. Thank you for thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Schiffelbein. Lonnie Tyndall. Skip that for right now. I'm gonna draw a circle around you so I remember to come back to you. Is that what you want me to do? I'll just skip it. Skip it. Okay. Mr. Charles Wiggins. Thank you. My name is Charles Wiggins. I live at 502 Cherokee Drive in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, I like to say that I'm a native of Jacksonville. I lived here the majority of my life. I'm a two-time Vietnam veteran. Uh, I'm a disabled veteran. I'm also a bicyclist, and I take my bicycle everywhere I go, and I've rode through many memorials. I've rode through Washington, D.C., theirs. Uh, I haven't des desecrated anything. I think one of the better things that Jacqueline has done for its seniors and everybody, but especially us people that can't play basketball anymore or soccer or anything, we can ride the trails and we enjoy it. I leave almost every morning with some veteran friends of mine from Dunkin' Donuts, and we ride the trail almost every day. And we are looking forward to this new trail so we have somewhere else to ride. I see... Mostly veterans on this trail. I see Marine Corps wives pushing strollers, walking, running. And I don't think any of us are going to do anything to bring harm to the Baruch Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, or anything else. I also have many comrades and friends whose names are on the wall, and I certainly wouldn't desecrate it. I know we've had a lot of committees that's worked on this. And it seems like to me you have picked out the best plans. And I say, let's get on with it. We're ready to ride. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wiggins. Mr. Grant Beck.
My name is Grant Beck. I live at 103 Jenny Drive here in Jacksonville. I'm a retired Marine. Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Woodruff and Mr. Elsie, thank you very much for the opportunity to come here this evening with the rest of these folks and express our opinions. Mr. Woodruff and Mr. Elsie, uh, excellent presentation. We appreciate how well that was put together. Told me some things I probably wasn't aware of. But I do have a couple of issues that I think certainly need to be addressed. One of them is the emotional side of it, which you've heard this evening, and you're probably going to hear some more and you're aware of. When I was over at the Beirut Memorial the other day walking through, trying to get a sense of where this bike trail was going to go, uh, I couldn't help but think, are there other alternatives? And I had heard that there was one about a bridge behind the uh, memorial, which I wouldn't have agreed with either. But I ran into about eight folks over there from two families in New Jersey, and they were walking around looking at different things. And I guess they thought I looked like a tour guide or something because they come over and asked me a couple of questions about what the girder was. So I explained that. I explained the Beirut Wall and I explained the Vietnam Memorial as best I could. And then I happened to mention that there was going to be a bike trail built through the Beirut Wall and I showed them where that little indentation was in the ground under the power line that that, were, that was where it was going to go. And this one gentleman looked at me and he said, why would they do that? Well, that's my question too. Why would they do that? Because it would seem to me, and maybe this situation has already been looked at and talked about, and I'm not a, an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, but it would seem to me that when you come across Johnson Boulevard on that bike trail that's already there, and you get to the entrance to Montford Point, the bike trail ends. But I'm assuming that you're gonna continue it inboard towards Camp Johnson a little bit and then come across the street and come through the Beirut Memorial. If that's the case, has it been looked at to make another left turn <coughs> instead of coming through the memorial, go back out to 24 and build a little bike trail up 24 like you have on Johnson Boulevard? And therefore, once you get past all of the proposed areas where you're going to put uh, the monuments and so forth, then cut back in like you're proposing to do by going through the memorial. If I'm making myself clear, I hope so. Yes, sir. But I don't know if that has been looked at. I hadn't heard it talked about this evening, hadn't seen it in any newspaper articles, and it's not on any flyers that I've seen. Yeah, I think but we'll I would be certainly that. hope that would be one thing mm -hmm. that needs to be looked at. Less expense, I would think, widening that already existing little path there, knock the curb down and widen the path a little bit. It would seem to me that that would be a lot less intrusive and it would certainly help those of us who have peoples on that wall. I don't have a relative there, but two of my students are on that wall that I just put through school in Quantico two months before. Yeah. I think that point will be addressed. Am I not correct there, Dr. Woodruff? Mayor, we do have representatives from the DOT right. who and may it, be able to address and that. And that is a DOT in issue, and we'll hear what they have to say about okay. it. So. And please don't tell us why it can't be done. Tell us how it can be done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Brock. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, my name is Thomas Brock. I live at 213 Glen Cannon Drive, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, I rise, as always, in support of trails and greenways in Jacksonville, and I rise in support of the Lejeune Greenway as it is planned. The path will directly connect Camp Lejeune and its housing areas with the Beirut Memorial and downtown Jacksonville. Dr. Woodruff's excellent presentation went through all of that. The draw downtown from the Camp Lejeune housing areas is very important. That way, the Marines and Sailor families that live in Tarawa Terrace and aboard Camp Lejeune can bring their children down to the Beirut Memorial, to the Vietnam Memorial, to the 9-11 Memorial, and teach them about the history that they did not live through. And I think that's very important, and I think it's often overlooked. Uh, the trail will also connect those same family members with the revitalized downtown area, the bicycle gallery. Biagios, Elsa's, 
I think it's very important and I fully hope that you all pull away from the emotion a little bit, not make a decision tonight, but make that in the coming days when, when you're separated from the very strong feelings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Uh, Teresa Carter. Good evening, Teresa Carter, 305 Kimberly Court, and I am the Tourism Director for Onslow County. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the City Council and the public about the issue facing the Vietnam Memorial and Lejeune Gardens. My name, as I said, is Teresa Carter and I'm the Director of Tourism. I've been with Tourism for 17 years and have been directing and managing Tourism for the past 11 years. As the tourism representative, I was under the impression that one of the reasons the Vietnam Memorial was being built using partial tourism funds from the county and city tourism funds was as an, as an attraction for visitors. It was being built to showcase the heroes that reside in our community and draw attention to the fact that we are a county that is made up of very patriotic individuals. Our citizens voluntarily go into harm's way daily, fully aware that they make may make the ultimate sacrifice in order to secure the blessings of liberty and the preservation of freedom for all of us. The gardens and memorials are a way to educate visitors about our community and to help understand the military way of life. As a tourism marketer, I've been trained to understand that connecting and partnering is the way to gain attention for attractions. Cross-promoting is a part of almost every project done in the city and county. When we provide information in different formats, we ensure we reach the most people. <coughs> the fact that the walking trail runs through the memorial is another way to cross-promote, ensure that fitness enthusiasts and recreational users will be exp exposed to significant histor historical sites and learn not only about the Vietnam Memorial, but the Beirut 9-11 and soon the Montfort Point Memorial. It means that people who walk or bike who may have never had any interest in the gardens may take the time to stop. They may see the beauty of the walls or the labor of love that handled the challenges of the dome, the creativity of the landscape. If they come, they will be inspired. If the trails bypass the memorials, I'm afraid we may lose those visitors. If you compare our memorial to Washington DC's memorials, they have millions of folks that visit. They come by the thousands weekly. There are groups that have protest in front of it because they are allowed that freedom of expression. With all of those that have visited, since it was built in 1983, the Vietnam Memorial has only had three incidents of vandalism. They, however, understand it is a public memorial and to deny anyone entrance would be a disrespect to those that fought and died to allow that freedom. So with the ultimate respect for those lives lost, I implore those making the decision, please allow the biking walking trail to continue to be an essential means of attracting new visitors to the memorial. Do not assume that because they may walk or ride through the memorials that they would not understand the solemn nature or the intent of the memorials. By touching more lives, the memorial will live on forever. If we keep it only for the family and friends of the Vietnam veterans, we run the chance of its losing its purpose. I want to ensure the public understands my desire to speak today. I'm going to take off my tourism hat and just speak Teresa Carter's citizen. My father served in Vietnam. He was shot down twice during his service. On his return from Vietnam, he was killed in a training exercise. He's buried in Arlington Cemetery what I consider to be one of the biggest attractions in the United States. Millions of people visit. They walk, ride bicycles, take shuttles, drive. I've had many visitors pass by as I'm placing flowers on his grave, but I've never felt that they were not respectful. In fact, most go out of their way to be just the opposite. They hush their loud talking, get off their bikes. I've even had one or two come up and hug me without saying a word. Seeing so many young people going through the area and watching the changing of the guards or visiting the Kennedy's grave sites, I know they are learning 
and seeing firsthand the sacrifice. So for those that think my decision to speak today is based on dollars and cents, no, that is not what not motivates me today. I want folks to, like my father, to be remembered for their sacrifice and not be forgotten. They were treated so bad during the war. Let them live forever in the minds of future generations as the heroes they all were. Sharing the gardens and memorials with our visitors is not only desired, but essential in keeping the torch alive. When we keep it accessible, we allow all to remember. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carter. <clears throat> David Miller. David here. David Miller. Okay. Thank you for coming. Houston Chanel. Mr. Mayor, City Council. My name is Houston Chanel. I live at 614 Winchester Road here in Jacksonville. Uh, I'm representing the Moffat Point Marine Association as a National Monument Director. Uh, we are in favor of the trail as it is, and the two things that cause us to support that is we see the trail as being about two things. The first one being about a thing, that being the trail. And we understand and have respect for all of the families who have loved ones on the wall. We believe that more individuals drive down Highway 24 and never stop to visit a memorial that would have an opportunity to get close enough to touch it, to feel it, to come to understand what we understand when you go through there. And for us to decide that, the other side of that is, the second item is the people. Not just the people that are on the walls, not just the families who have loved ones there, but the people who have to come to understand what we understand. We are deciding, if we decide to change the trail, we are deciding to move a class of individuals simply because they ride bicycles or simply because they walk. And we're doing this based on not necessarily the notion that they won't play by the rules. They won't respect what we respect. They won't come in and feel the same sanctity here that we feel. And our position is, if we aren't careful, that will take us back to 1941. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Jeff LeBlanc. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Name's Jeff LeBlanc. Uh, I live at 155 Rain Tree Circle. Uh, I'm a retired Marine of 26 years. I'm an avid cyclist. I'm also the current president of Down East Cyclists, which is the local Jacksonville cycling community. I'd like to know when it became disrespectful to ride a bike, push a stroller, or run past our national monuments. Washington, D.C. does it every day. Our city manager, uh, Dr. Woodruff made some excellent points. Uh, a lot of hard work was done in going into planning this route. Uh, obviously, we are in full support of this route. There's a lot of local clubs that utilize the current trails today as it is and are looking forward to the trails continuing on through the memorials and into downtown Jacksonville. Not just cyclists, but a group of uh, marine moms called Stroller Warriors. I saw 30 of them running the trail the other day, pushing their strollers down the trail. Uh, getting out for exercise as a group, supporting each other while their husbands are deployed, running with their children. Uh, we have marine runners. It comes with the job title. We run. And where's a better place to run than a nice segregated path that takes us past our brothers and sisters who have given our all uh, at some of our memorials. Nothing would please me more than to be able to continue to ride my bike and instead of making a left-hand turn after that bridge, make a right-hand turn, continue on into the memorials, and visit my fallen brothers uh, on all of the walls and all of the memorials that are taking place there. At this point, we all know, uh, thanks to Dr. Woodruff, that funding's been approved, bids are ready to be open, and the plan is ready to go forward. Our fear is, is that continued delays and restudies of different areas and different routes after so much hard work has been done, that uh, funding is gonna be taken away or lost altogether. I know there's a lot of emotion involved in this. We've heard from family members. We've seen and heard the emotions this evening. I too have emotions on those walls. I was supposed to be on that Mew that went to Beirut. 
And a friend of mine went in my place because my wife was pregnant and he wanted me to be home to see the birth of my first child. I don't know where my emotions would be had that friend not come back alive from that mew. You talk about being able to see the wall from Highway 24. I ask you, where's the respect in going by our brothers at 45 miles an hour? I say there is respect when our runners and riders and stroller moms can push up to those walls and stop and show their young children that our Marines can go out for a run and stop for a quick prayer in front of one of those walls for their brothers. You talk about forgotten warriors and that nobody remembers these things anymore. The best way for them to remember them is to stick them in their face. Let them ride by them, let them bike by them, let them push their children by them and visit them on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Dory Mew. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Phillips and council members. Thank you for taking this time to hear us. Uh, my name is Dory Mew. I live at 122 Riverwalk Landing, Jacksonville. Um, our residence is approximately one mile from the trail where it begins at Newbridge Middle School. And about seven years ago, my husband and I purchased a couple of used bikes and began riding the rails to Trails Greenway with some neighbors and friends. We've enjoyed it immensely as it's a great surface to ride on. Uh, it's very scenic to travel and it's very safe from the motor vehicle traffic on the main roads in Jacksonville that we all know can sometimes be a little hairy. Um, soon after we began riding, we learned about the Down East Cyclist Club, which Jeff just mentioned, and we joined that group and we began to meet many new friends, cycling friends, um, who go cycling on the trail on a regular basis. There's another group of uh, younger cyclists that gather from the bicycle gallery, which is just a couple doors down from us, that ride on the trail and other areas of town as well. Um, the vast majority of these cyclists that we have ridden with over the past seven years are either active duty Marines, retired Marines, dependents of Marines or local and professional business people. The ages vary anywhere from in their early 20s to over 80 years old. I can't imagine any of these individuals who have served our country themselves being disrespectful in any way while near these memorials to those who have sacrificed for us. Any concerns folks have about cyclists crossing through this area are completely unfounded. At this time, I'd like to ask all bicyclists who are present tonight who stand with me on this issue to please quietly stand for a moment. Thank you. And thank you, gentlemen and ladies, uh, for this time and this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Mew. Diane LeBlanc. Good evening, Mayor Phillips and honorable members of the City Council. My name is Diane LeBlanc. I live at 155 Rain Tree Circle. I honorably served in the Marine Corps for eight years. I am the wife of a Marine, a retired Marine. I'm an avid cyclist, but none of those reasons are the reasons why I stand here before you this evening to address you. I stand here as an educator. As an educator, we are always looking for teachable moments with our children, whether they're in elementary school, whether they're in middle school, whether they're in high school. Children learn best when they can be taught both visually and verbally. 25.6% of the population of Onslow County is under the age of 18. Respect for a place like the Lejeune Memorial Gardens is not caught, but it is taught. As the use of the Greenway continues to increase, the addition of this portion through the gardens will provide the opportunity for teachable moments so that generations now and generations to come will carry on and live out a legacy that truly says, we will always, always remember, we will never, ever forget. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. LeBlanc. <clears throat> Michael Rooney. My name is Michael Rooney. I live at 103 Deerfield Road, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I represent the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Foundation. The foundation don't have any reason, actually I take that back, the foundation don't mind the rail for trails. It's where it's going in between the two monuments. Uh, Mr. Senate, gave a good presentation on the board as to an alternative to going through in the center of or in between these, bo these uh, monuments. Also, Mr. Beck gave a good proposal as to another alternative, and the only thing we've got against it is that's Harold Ground. It's a place to reflect, and uh, there isn't any reason why Anybody can't, it's on that bike trail, no matter which trail they take, cannot go into the memorial gardens and see the monuments. They can go right behind it, just like everybody else. And they can come right up in the parking lot of the, of the Beirut Memorial, and they can walk in and do their visiting, uh, just like anybody else would do. So please uh, take that in consideration. But Mr. Bennett, Mr. Uh, Senate gave a good presentation, and I go. I will go for that kind of betrayal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Danny Joy. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. My name is Danny Joy. I live here in Jacksonville. I'm also the Vice President of the Beirut Veterans of America. And with that said, I'm also on the Beirut Advisory Committee to the City of Jacksonville as a representative from the Beirut Veterans of America. Um, <clears throat> over the past four or five years, we've looked at this trail, uh, which has been in existence uh, on paper, uh, various different routes uh, for approximately 10 plus years. Um, and we've game planned this, we've looked at this trail um, and there is a lot of emotion with it. Uh, the first monument uh, that was built was the Beirut Memorial. Um, and since then, it be, has become the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. Um, myself and everybody else on the committee, there's nobody there that would do anything to disrespect the sanctity of these memorial gardens. So we've looked at all the different proposed routes, and the one we came up with was uh, the most common sense. It was the... Um, it was probably the, uh, the, the most cost effective um, and the other trail that was, would be adjacent to 24 would effectively, and you saw the pictures that Dr. Woodruff would effectively block the memorial from the people going by 24 and we didn't want to do that. And uh, with the added, uh, the rails to trails and the, the bike people and um, women in their strollers with the kids, we thought, and we've, we've talked to many, many people, myself included, uh, I've talked to a lot of Bayward veterans, and we think that this would draw people to the M Memorial Gardens. Now the concept of the trail, um, the rails to trail has been, uh, ever since they tore up the, the railroad tracks years ago, um, the whole concept was, uh, and they moved the, um, uh, the, um, the Beirut Memorial Grove of Trees, uh, if you're coming down 17, that's the first thing you see as you're coming into uh, Jacksonville. Now you come up and you cross the brand new bridge and you see the new um, <clears throat> uh, the, the boat ramps that are being built. Then you see the new uh, public safety building. Well, all this is sort of a draw right downtown to Jacksonville, which then leads into the trail which leads into the Memorial Gardens, which eventually links the rails to trail. So it's the, the master plan, which we're looking at a, a very short um, time frame and we've got our blinders on, but the master plan, this has always been in the master plan. And working with the city of Jacksonville, working with the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee, um, I am a Beirut veteran. I was there uh, during the bombing with the uh, 
Daryl Gibson. He was our platoon corpsman. Doc Gibson was also a Vietnam vet, got out of the Marine Corps and came back into the, uh, into the Navy as a corpsman. Um, when our BAS got destroyed, um, and I know I'm going off on <clears throat> uh, my time, but uh, uh, the only people that were left on the ground as far as medical personnel were our line company corpsmen and a few of the folks that were out on ship. Um, we didn't want to have anything to do with disrespecting, I say, the sanctity of the memorial because we have the, the Corman Memorial eventually that's going to be built there, uh, the Monfort Point Memorial, um, and I don't think that the, not unless there's some other wild uh, trail uh, route that can be made, uh, I don't really think that the, uh, the trail is going to detract any at all from the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. I think it'll actually bring people to the gardens, um, and it is, it's a teachable moment. Uh, there's a lot of folks here that live in Onzo County that have never stepped foot in that garden. Now with this trail, it's gonna open it up a little bit more to these people that are, you know, have just given it, you know, a, a passing glance as they've driven by on 24. Um, myself and the, uh, the Beirut Veterans of America support the trail as it is. Uh, the proposal, uh, and we have. When I first, when I first was told of the trail, I was totally against it, totally against it at all, until we 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 game planned the different routes and we looked at these trails and we looked at the best course of action is the one that we've proposed right now. Not unless um, that uh, there's there's there is another way, uh, the other trail going up to skirting 24 but then again you're blocking the memorial from 24 by building that because you're going to have to build a, um, uh, a 56 inch uh, because it's got to be ADA specified you're going to have to build a 56 inch uh, side railing on each side with the pickets not more than a, a fist length apart because little children could fall through those the railing so um, what we've looked at was the best overall, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joy. Dick, and you? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilman. I'm Dick Mew. I live at 122 Riverwalk Landing. Uh, when this issue came up, I went on the internet and came up with the handout that you all have about the National Mall and the first sentence it says that they welcome bicycles to the memorials on the National Mall. And I think this city should also welcome this bike path, welcome bicyclists, joggers, walkers, uh, mothers with strollers. It's another way to bring people out to the memorial. And I'm sure that just as it is in Washington, these people will uh, respect the memorials and it will be a new way to get people to come out and honor those who are memorialized there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sean Kane. Hello, uh, my name is Sean Kane. Uh, I live at 505 Oak Lane in Jacksonville. Um, I'm a member of the Downey Cyclists. I have, uh, you know, I work at Bicycle Gallery downtown. Um, <clears throat> I just want to, you know, give uh, another, maybe another perspective. Um, I am, uh, my background is in mechanical engineering. Um, I look at this from a very, very logical, logical perspective. Um, Dr. Witter's presentation was Pretty, pretty impressive, and uh, I did want to say that you know a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the objections to the plan as it's proposed now, um, you know, have not listened to what Dr. Woodruff was saying. So um, taking that into consideration, um, I think is is very important to to what's at stake here. Um, so. Uh, I would like just to um, to uh, recommend that you know just 
that you take into consideration what uh, what the presented presented material has been. So, thank you. Thank you. I had a couple of uh, folks that wanted to be skipped. Did you reconsider and want to be considered again? If so, how about anyone that came in after? Oh, Mr. Horace Mann. Okay. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, for this opportunity tonight. Uh, my name is Horace Mann. I live at 120 Riverwalk Landing in Jacksonville. And I kind of feel sorry for y'all because y'all have done everything right. You had, you've planned this for years. You've involved all of the stakeholders out there. You've, uh, you've done everything right. And now you funded it. But now you come to this moment when you've got people upset. You're in a no-win situation, and I know you know that because no matter what decision you make, you're going you're gonna to make some people unhappy. You know, I kind of get upset with people thinking that bicyclists are disrespectful. I mean, these memorials, there's major highways right there. I mean, I've been out there, and sometimes, you know, the noise is deafening when you're at the memorial from the highway, from the cars. I don't think it's like that with bicyclists. I, I was with a group of 13 bicyclists riding Sunday. We're riding on the trail to Camp Lejeune. There's some trash. 13 of us stop. We pick up the trash. We didn't put it down there. We picked it up. We take pride in the trails that we have. We're respectful of, of the trails. We're respectful of the Marine Corps and the memorials that we have there. I think the purpose of a memorial is to draw people there. Why do we want to limit access? You know, a bike trail provides access. As Mr. Muse said, the National Mall encourages, I believe it's the actual, it's the National Park Service that rents bicycles to people so that they can get to the memorials. That's what we're trying to do here. Someone was talking about uh, not liking women with strollers going, you know, near it. Well, I've been out there at the memorial before and I've seen some women with strollers there and they weren't creating any disturbance. The child might have cried a little bit, but I don't think that hurt the serenity of the moment. It was just a child being a child. I understand and respect some of the concerns that the people have whose loved ones are memorialized in there, but I'd like for them to share that memorial with us. Don't keep it private. It's not just for them. It's for all of the citizens of Jacksonville. We need to Continue. The plan is a good plan. You've done everything right. You've involved. You've had public hearings in the past. It's not time to change at the last moment. You know, city council, everybody always complains about city council wasting money. Well, if you abandon this plan, you're wasting money because you've got to go back and start all over. So right now, as a taxpayer, I'm encouraging you to continue with this plan because it's well thought out. It's been planned for years. It's funded. And if you don't do it, you're wasting our tax dollars. But thank you. I'm sure y'all will make the right decision. And have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone else present? Yes, sir. Would you please step forward? If you would give your name for the clerk and Absolutely, your address. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. My name is Paul Syverson, retired Marine. Uh, born and bred in New York City, so I'm a transplant. And in my 30 years in the Marine Corps, I decided to retire down here to Jacksonville because I think this is the best place in the world to live. And I'm proud to be a resident of Jacksonville. Since I first found out about this bike path, I've been opposed to it. I've been opposed to it for several reasons. And I've heard both sides of it. But the thing that sticks in my mind when I hear the pros and cons of it is when you hear from the families, it's about their family. It's about their loved ones. When I hear from the bicycle riders, it's about them. How the bike path is going to benefit them. I don't hear about the families, but when I hear from the families, I hear about the loved ones that were lost. And to me, that's a concern. I think Mr. Stennett offered a, a great uh, alternative plan, and I think it's one that truly needs to be looked at and, and, and carefully considered. Now, I go down there quite a bit. I do sit on the uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Foundation with Mike Rooney. Uh, 
but that has nothing to do with this. Uh, I bring a lot of visitors down there. Uh, just about every visitor that comes to town to visit me, I make it a point to bring down to Memorial Gardens because I think that's one of the show places of Jacksonville. I think we should be very proud of it. So I, I ask the city council and, and, and mayor to please at least consider the alternate plan. And I do not think as the plan it, as presented tonight from Mr. Stennett will take away from the memorial in any manner. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Bauer. My name is Ron Bauer. I live at 916 Welsh Lane, Jacksonville, North Carolina. My first day at Jacksonville was 23 October 1983. I came to work at the schools at Camp Johnson. As a senior civilian there, I was asked to work with the Beirut Memorial Advisory Board or the Beirut Memorial Commission at that time in helping to develop the process of installing the memorial. I'm a history teacher. I have been participating in the history of the Montfort Point Marines and another and several other activities in the community to include the Onslow County Museum. And I believe in history, so I'm here to speak for the hundreds of thousands of children that are not here tonight that will be here someday. And they need to know about this. And anything that improves the access to the Memorial Gardens, to my way of thinking, is a plus in the education arena. Because as historians like to say, and I hate to be uh, too... Uh, what would you call it dramatic but those who cannot remember the past are doomed to defeat it or repeat it i'm sorry to repeat it and consequently i think it's imperative that as much access to the memorial gardens can be made especially for those who do not have independent transportation they can't drive i teach middle school and high school kids many of these kids have many things on their mind, but once in a while, maybe, they will come down to these memorials, read the names, and say, who are those people? What did they do? And they'll go back and look it up in a book and learn about it. I have no particular affiliation with anybody on that wall because I knew nobody that was in Beirut when that happened. But I have come to adopt the Marines as my second service because I'm an Army veteran, 42 years on the rolls, as a matter of fact. My high school has more names on the Vietnam Wall than any high school in the country. Edison High School from Philadelphia, 64 names on that wall. I want those kids to be able to come down and look at that wall also and think of Ron Bridger, the boy that lived around the corner from me. And he died in a helicopter crash and Charles Stanley, who died in a helicopter crash in Vietnam. And I want them to understand what history is about, and I think this is part of what, what, we're, what we're doing here tonight. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Bauer. Anyone else? Yes, sir, hand in the back. My name is Mike Smith, 810 Little John Avenue. Jacksonville is my home and has been my home since I came here as a military brat back in the 50s. I don't know if I'm going to put my words correctly or not after hearing everything tonight, but I personally would like to see the proposed bike route rerouted in some way. Now, that does not make a lot of people happy. I am not anti-bicycles that we've heard so much tonight. That has nothing in my heart at all. It is just the location of the path. I go to the memorial gardens, which means something to me. Memorial, 
There is a memory here of all the folks who have their names there. And one in particular was a former high school friend of mine at Lejeune, Lejeune High School in those days by the name of Dave Battle. Dave and I played football together, and I go and visit his name each and every time that I am there, as I do other friends. But again, it has nothing to do with bicycles. It has nothing to do with teachable moments. And I don't want this to be disrespectful, and I think it was Ms. LeBlanc, as far as teachable moments are concerned. I agree with you 100%. The last class I taught as a high school history teacher was to tell the students, put your books in the locker, which they enjoyed, come to class, here are your permission slips, there'll be a bus out front tomorrow, get on it. Because I had heard through the semester, they didn't know anything about the Memorial Gardens. And I loaded them up on a bus, and we came. We visited each of the three monuments. And when we got back on that bus, you could have heard a pin drop. Hopefully, mission accomplished. And I hopefully we can accomplish this mission by trying to see if there is not a way that we can reroute the bike path with no derogatory feelings toward our cycling friends. And as I go to sit down, I would like to thank the city of Jacksonville for entertaining me yesterday. I came in unannounced. I was looking for a map of the proposed bike route, because I'm still kind of fuzzy on where it goes once it exits the Memorial Gardens toward Camp Lejeune. And I was received with open arms by your two assistant city managers, Colonel Massey and Glenn Hargett. They took me in a back room put out the map, and they were just as nice and kind and helpful to me. I felt like a very big VIP. And I thank them, and I thank you for allowing them to do that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Mr. Keyes. Good evening. My name is Al Keyes. I'm also retired military, retired Army, and proud of it. Thank you so much for allowing me to come up and speak. I originally thought I would not speak, but there seemed to be so much controversy, so many great points, uh, but I wanted to express my opinion as well. I want you to know that uh, some of you may not be aware, but I've been on trails and greenways. I was on trails and greenways for many years, pretty much from the beginning of the concept of the rails to trails, and worked on uh, not only on that, but with the uh, people that were hired as well to give us the concept as to where the trails would go. Um, I've heard great comments. Your presentation, sir, was really, really, really outstanding. Uh, well, there seemed to be the opinion that if bikes and children uh, being pushed through on trollers, strollers rather, uh, that they are only passing through and they're going to cause trouble and they're going to devastate and that they won't have the same feelings as someone walking in there and sitting. Many of those people that will be going there on bikes or, or strollers or walking or running will go and will memorialize our loved ones the same as you. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I have uh, people that I know on that wall 
and it means a lot to me. I would never, whether on foot or on bike, would never go in there and, and cause trouble or devastate anything at all. I think that those individuals that would be on bikes, would be uh, pushing strollers or running, would have the same respect uh, as any of the rest of us would. Those are my comments. Again, I, I support the plan as presented. Thank you, Mr. Keyes. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Michaela Taylor. First Sergeant David Battle was my grandfather. Um, the biggest reason why this bothers me so much, first of all, is obviously because I do have a loved one on that wall, even though I didn't know him. Um, and a lot of other people do too. And people have made good points about how um, people need to be more educated about the wall. And that's great. And it's great that people want to ride bikes through there to learn more about it. But the things that I've heard that have bothered me is it's more about people having more places to ride bikes or for tourists to be attracted to come to North Carolina. And the walls and memorials were not built to attract people or for people to come and walk through and ride bikes and I don't have anything against them but these memorials were built just for us to be able to remember our fallen family members and friends and I don't think that we should have a bike path through there because that's not what the walls were built for so thank you thank you Michael. Kelly anyone else Yes, sir, in the back. My name is Travis Monroe. I live in 221 West Railroad Street, Jacksonville, North Carolina. I am a avid biker, and uh, I'm also a patriot. And for me, going to those memorials is a, is a time for reflection on uh, and, and saying thanks to my servicemen that gave the ultimate sacrifice. It's not, you know, I don't want to drive, ride my bike through there. I suggest that the plan that goes around it would be more uh, acceptable to uh, people that are there uh, trying to pay their respects. Um, there's, there's walkways, walk paths through there why you know why can't we ride our bikes on the round around it park our bikes there and walk through there um i don't see why why that's not proposed what that gentleman over there proposed is a great idea is to go around it i don't you know personally as a as a patriot when i'm there all i want to do is just say prayers and thank you and and and, and have peace and quiet that's it with these family members these people here you know, it goes with not just them, with everybody that's given, you know, their lives. When they're there, it's a place of remembrance and memorial. I don't know the last time you've been to, uh, to D.C., but I go to D.C. quite often. And when I'm, out, when I'm walking through some of the memorials through there, I don't, I don't like seeing the bikes going by there, personally. They, they fly by you, you know, you know it's, just, it's just not a good thing. So I'm, I'm for going around it and not, not going through it. Thanks, that's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Kurt Kresge. Um, my wife is Amy Battle Kresge. I'd hate to be where you guys are. <laughs> um, we live at 165 Charlie Taylor Road in Hubert. Um, I'm not against any bicyclists at all whatsoever. I welcome them, um, but I do propose you go along 24. I think it's hollowed ground and you need to treat it with respect. I got 160 signatures in one day of active duty Marines who are 100% against it in one day in three hours, 160 names. 
could easily have been their names, my name, up on that wall. Please go around it. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Did I miss someone? All right, Dr. Woodruff, uh, do you have any other uh, information to provide to us? I know you had so there were some people, uh, other folks here from DOT that. Uh... Yes, the. <clears throat> I apologize, uh, Mayor and Council. The uh, the proposal as submitted to you, as we have said, is permitted and can be built. The proposal that Mr. Senate has proposed to you, I'm sure that in time it could be constructed. I think the real question that you as the elected officials have to face is what is the purpose you want that trail to accomplish? <clears throat> you know, you've heard excellent testimony of those who have loved ones on the wall who would like for it to be more of a reflection garden, an area where it's dignified, where they can come. You've heard testimony from those who believe that it can still accomplish that with the trail as we're proposing. It really is not about location A or location B. It is really about what do you believe the purpose of that trail is? I think it's what it, that's what it comes down to. I don't know that tonight you are prepared to answer that question. I think all of us have been touched by the sincere testimony that has been given on both sides of this issue. The real question that you have to answer is this. When that trail is built in location A or location B, what's the purpose that it should serve? Because once it's built, it will either serve a purpose or a different purpose. One of the unfortunate things in living in the United States is that we all like solutions in 30 minutes and we all have short-term memory. Whether it's who played in the Super Bowl last year or whether it's what happened on 9-11 or whether it's what happened on October 23rd. Your decision is about how do we best honor the fallen through various wars and service, and what is the purpose that you want the location to serve? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any discussion and comments? I'll open it up. Um, first, um, <clears throat> I guess I would just like to say that um, I came in this evening with nothing prepared uh, intentionally. Uh, I wanted an opportunity to, to listen, and I'm glad I did because there was some tremendous uh, comments tonight. I'm a former Marine. Um, I am also a bike rider, and, and my wife and I ride the trails every weekend. And um, we have a great deal of pride in this community. And, and tonight was, a <laughs> was just a reminder of, of why I'm still here and, and why I serve uh, in this great community. It's because of the people that are out here tonight um, sharing their thoughts, sharing their feelings on a very uh, a difficult and divided um, decision. Um, we have spent a great deal of time on, on the gardens and the planning and execution of the many aspects of the garden. I sit as the TAC chairman and also the TDA chairman um, who uh, have been involved within the support of the Beirut Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and the Museum of the Marine. I think it's important to note after listening to everyone that we should not be a divided group. I really don't believe that it's a matter of the bicyclists versus the families um, because we're all patriots in here 
and we're all sons and daughters and former Marines and and some have had friends who we have lost and some are just simply citizens who, who have lived here in, in support of this community their whole life. I think we have to remember the intent of the memorial. I think we have to get down to the basics and, and the basics as I see it is the memorial and the founding fathers and the leadership of the base when the 27 acres were, were donated for memorials was to expose as many people that we could in our community to the many members who had given the ultimate sacrifice. So that's where the master plans were designed, how it was going to be laid out, the Beirut Memorial being the first memorial, the yearly dedications, how are we going to commute people in and out, the parking areas, all the various planning and future planning elements of, of, of the place. And so I think we need to remember that using taxpayers' money to build these memorials, we have to remember that we have to make it open to as many people who visit and live in our area as, as we can, not excluding anyone. And I don't believe that whether there's a trail or not a trail will either enhance or take away. If anything, the trail will allow people to spend more time looking and stopping and reflecting. I don't think there's anyone that is part of this city leadership that would endorse or not prohibit anything that would desecrate those memories and the respect of, of, of the gardens as it exists today. We had to fight very hard for the funding of this last piece. As I told you, I sit on the, uh, on the TAC committee. This last piece of the, uh, of the uh, Greenway plan was almost lost, but we were able to secure it by the, by the, by the help of our legislators and senator and by the people at DOT and the planning processes. It wasn't overnight. This is something that's been in plans for years and years and years, and you saw the presentations, all the stakeholders were involved, we had open meetings. Everything we do here at City Hall is televised. Every meeting is televised. We hold nothing back when it comes to giving our citizens the information that they deserve. We can go back and relook at maybe some alternatives. That's always a possibility. But I want you all to know that that has all been already looked at. We have spent a lot of time and effort in looking at alternatives way before we ever got to this alternative. But at the end of the day, when you link taxpayer dollars, tourism, master planning, giving folks the ability to have destination points when they visit our community, a memorial is a destination point. It's a place where you want folks to come. The Freedom Fountain, the whole idea behind building the Freedom Fountain was to memorialize everyone who has come and served in our community. And we want as many people to come and visit it as we possibly can. Not to come and disrespect the fountain or the people that have served. I just really hope that you know we we think about everything that has been said tonight and regardless of which way it goes I really don't believe it's a matter of the bicyclist versus someone strolling their their child because everyone has a right to visit the memorial no matter how they get there we used 
public dollars to build these memorials. And the intent of these memorials was for that and only purpose, to memorialize the people that have given the ultimate sacrifice and to expose it to everyone that visits our community. And I know that's a difficult thing to hear, but that is the truth. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's don't let's don't get out of order here. I'm not. I'm just telling the truth. Okay. Um, Miss Lake, I understand. I really do understand, and and my heart goes out to you for your loss. You know, I admire I admire your loved one for the sacrifice that they made to this country and for me. I'm not just Miss Battle. My brother. I'm speaking yeah. For all I I know you are, Miss Battle. Under you need to you need to relax just a minute, okay? Miss Battle uh, Kresge. You, I, I honor your, your father for his sacrifice. You, you know, uh, the reason that we are up here having these free meetings tonight, you know, is the fact that we have people like your father who, who gave everything he had for this country, for the freedom that we enjoy. And nothing, uh, there's nothing, that, nothing in this world that I would want to besmirch his honor. And I can tell you that right now. Uh, I'm not going to talk about money or bicycles or or bro, uh, roller bladers or, or stroller pushers or anything like that, but I do want to talk about this. I know that some good intent has gone in to these memorials, and this started back with the Beirut Committee, the first memorial that was constructed over there, where that whole plan started. This wasn't a military plan. This wasn't the families of the, lost, the people that lost their lives over there. This was a plan of folks that wanted to honor these people that really had no connection whatsoever to these people, had no connection. But just like I'm saying now, their sacrifice should be honored, okay? Should be honored from now until the end of time. That's why every year when I get up and give my speech at the Beirut Memorial, since I've been mayor, the one thing I, I do do is I promise, and I make the promise, we will never forget, okay? We will never forget these folks that mean so much to our community. What is our memorial going to be? What is our memorial going to be in 20 years, 30 years, 60 years? a hundred years when we're gone I, you might still be here Michaela in a hundred years but I don't think none of us can outrun that but what is that what is that memorial going to mean to everybody then you know that's that's what we need to know we want to know that Mr. Battle and what was what was your father what was your what was his name or brother. your brother we want your brother we want people to be able to look up those walls look at those memorials and see their name still etched in there a hundred years from now when we're not here I know I won't be I don't live good enough to be here in a hundred years but you know we want to make sure that somebody when they walk by whether they get in their car drive park in the parking lot walk up to the memorial or if they were to ride a bicycle if say they say we rerouted the the uh, bike trail and they park their bicycle and hitch it to a tree or something and walk down the embankment to the memorial and look at it we want people to go there we want people to remember we want them to remember it's not about it's not about to me it's never been about reflection it's been about memory never forgetting the sacrifice that these people made I, I know, I know that, and you would have a long way to go to get there from, from uh, Jupiter. Where's your Florida. Florida? Yeah, but uh, but I'm just saying, you know, we want people, we want people to go there, whether they're civilian, military, foreign, domestic, whatever. We want them to go there, and we want to see, we want them to see, we want them to remember what happened. If people push that out of, out of their mind, if it escapes everybody all this has been for naught nothing okay 
So that's my, that's my dog in the fight. I want to keep my promise. I, want, I, I don't ever want to forget. I don't want my community to forever, ever forget. I don't want the people that our tourism uh, folks like Teresa Carter promote to get people to come back to our community. And most of the people that we're after to come back to this community are people that probably have some connection to that wall, to the Beirut Memorial, to the Vietnam Memorial. Think about, think about the folks over here from the uh, Montford Point Marine Association. They're gonna build a monument Probably, and I hope this is not the case, probably by the time it gets designed and funded and built, there may not be a single Montfort Point Marine left. I hope not. I sure hope not. I hope that's not the case. But there's that, you know, most of those, most of those folks that made that sacrifice, and let me tell you something, they made a heck of a sacrifice. You know, here, here was people with, that served in the armed forces, defend our country, that were treated like second-class citizens. That were kept separate, weren't allowed to mingle with the white troops until what year, 47? 49. 49. You know, but we want people to remember that, don't we? We don't want people to forget about that time in our history, do we? No, sir, I don't. It's a bad time to think about, isn't it? So with that said, the reason for the memorials are that people don't forget. And that is, again, my promise. The Beirut Memorial, especially closest to my heart, you know, because that's the one that really affected a lot of us that we can remember because it's been more recent history. You know, a lot of the folks that lost their lives in that bombing in Beirut, well, you know what? They were stationed in this community. They were part of our community. They were, as I always, tell, always say, they were coaches. They were people we went to church with. They were people whose kids went to school with our kids. You know, 83, that whole, that whole situation there was a turning point in the relationship between the United States Marine Corps and the civilian population in Jacksonville and, and Camp Lejeune. It is the turning point, it is the key event that brought this community together as one. You know, they made a heck of a sacrifice and it had a heck of an outcome, didn't it? Yes, it did. But again, whatever happens on this, I, you know, I, again, I understand the emotions involved and everything, but, um, all I can ask you for is your faith and trust that we will do the right thing after we've had a chance to deliberate and look at all everything involved. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? I think you did a good job. Mm -hmm. right. With that said, uh, Council, uh, I did have a couple of other comments I wanted to make. Again, let me say I want to thank every one of you for coming out tonight. I, I really appreciate the input that you've given us. Um, again, <laughs> it kind of breaks my heart to hear a lot of the, a lot of the things that you've told me. You know, I, and I know, I know it. I, I know it bothers. I mean, it's it's something that weighs heavily upon you. <coughs> Uh, sorry that Congressman Jones couldn't be here tonight, uh, but hopefully we might even send him a copy of the uh, video for him Mayor, to prove. We'll be very happy to do that, and again, we do appreciate the courtesy. I would like to make two announcements relative to military activities. I would remind everyone that we will be having the annual observance on October 23rd at the Beirut Memorial, and I'd also like to remind folks that we're coming up on the time for the Veterans Day Parade. And that, of course, occurs over on Western Boulevard, beginning at the community college. And Ron, do you remember the time for the parade? And the time for the observance on the 23rd? Pardon me? Okay. <clears throat> Mary Council, thank you for your time tonight. Council doesn't wish to take any action tonight. No. no. Okay. All right. 
Uh, with that said, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further comment? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Meeting closed. <laughs>